When we first look at trigonometry, the first thing we think about is right triangle trigonometry. Um, and so let's, let's start with the discussion of what is right triangle trig. Right triangle trig is all based on the idea of a right triangle. And uh, hopefully you're with me on the idea that a right triangle is one where one of the angles is 90 degrees. Since all of the inside angles of a triangle add up to 180, uh, these other two must also add up to 90 degrees if this guy's 90. Anyways, uh, maybe at some time or another you heard this phrase SOKATOA. If you've not, we'll talk about it now. Uh, SOKATOA is designed to help us remember what the trig ratios are with regard to this right triangle. So um, let's say that we pick an angle, and we can either pick this top one or the bottom one. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's go ahead and just call that. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, you could use letters to represent that angle, but as you get into more advanced math classes, we use Greek letters. So I'm going to go ahead and start us off with the idea of this Greek letter called theta. Looks a little bit like the planet Saturn. Uh, and, uh, and we're just going to call that our angle. So hopefully you're with me on that. Probably be, would be worthwhile to pause and make a note. That little funky looking guy is called theta. I'll be referring to it that way. Uh, then Sokotoa. Um, if we wanted to find the sine of that angle theta, the way we do it is we take the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. And that's what Sokotoa does for us. It helps us to remember this. Now, um, uh, what what is what's all this about opposite and hypotenuse? Well, uh, in order to get this stuff right, um, we're going to try to think of the triangle in a certain way. You have to really understand a right triangle. For one thing, what's the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is the side that is directly across from the right angle. So, and it also happens to be the longest side in any right triangle. Um, so it's the side that's across from this angle. Here's the, here's the right angle, or the 90 degree angle. The side that's directly across from it, that guy, is the hypotenuse. All right? And, and that, that is helpful. If you can remember what the hypotenuse is, then it's easier to get these trigonometric ratios correct. And that's exactly what this is. Sine is trig, and opposite over hypotenuse is a ratio. Anytime we have some number over another number, we call that a ratio. It's also known as a fraction, but we refer to it as a ratio. And that's why these guys are all known as trig ratios. So if you can locate the hypotenuse in a right triangle, you're halfway there in figuring out what the sine of a particular angle is. Uh, and uh, the only other thing we need is this thing called the opposite side. And where do we find the opposite side on this triangle? Woo. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to, to find it with everything that's going on here, but um, the reality is the opposite side is just the side that's directly across from the angle that we're interested in. If the angle we were interested in was up here, the opposite side would be down here. Since the angle we're interested in is right here, the opposite side is going to be over here. So with regard to this triangle, the one that you see right now, this side is the opposite side. It's the side across from the angle. So why do we care about this trig ratio? Why do we care about the sine of an angle or the opposite side or the hypotenuse? Well, uh, just like so many things in life, the reason why we study math is because as humans, we're curious. We want to know things. Um, sometimes we have some information and we want to know things that we don't know. So we take the stuff we know and we use math to figure out the things we don't know. In this case, if we knew the hypotenuse and the angle, we could figure out the opposite side length. Or if we knew any two of these pieces of information, we could figure out the other missing one. So let's take a look at a mildly practical application of this.
So uh, let's take a look at a practical application, sort of, sort of practical. Um, uh, we, we, we have a ladder. Maybe we're a fire person. Uh, maybe we're a fireman or a firewoman. And, uh, and we have this ladder, and we, want, we know how long the ladder is. We're told how long the ladder is if it's fully extended. Uh, and we'd like to put it up against a building, but we'd like to know how high on the building it, it can reach up. Um, in this and and also there's a particular angle that needs to be used in order for the ladder to be uh, safely placed. So uh, we're going to call that angle theta. Hopefully you can see it here. And uh, and then here's the ladder. For for our example, we'll say that the ladder is 15 feet long. So uh, let's say that we know that uh, for this ladder to be placed safely, um, we, that our angle should be 60 degrees. So we'll go ahead and we'll say theta equals 60 degrees. Um, well, uh, if, uh, let's see here, we go, we go sine of 60 degrees uh, equals, uh, and then remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is what we're looking for. We'd like to know this height, right? And uh, and so and I guess actually I'm not going to call it H because the H is the hypotenuse, right? Um, so anyway, so let's say we're trying to find the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which we know is 15. Um, we could use this if we could figure out what the sine of 60 degrees is, and and we can in a couple of different ways. Um, then then we could say, hey, x is equal to 15 times the sine of 60 degrees. Yay. So, so this, uh, knowing the trig ratio, sine, and knowing that the sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse, gives us the ability to find out unknowns. If we know, if we know the length of the ladder, the hypotenuse, and we know the angle that we must lean against the building, we can figure out how far up on the building that ladder is going to reach. Now, whether you, whether you love this example or not, it is just one of many possible examples of why we, why we like to know about sine and cosine and tangent. So hopefully, real quickly, I'm going to finish this video up by just reminding you the cosine and the tangent ratios. So uh, if we uh, have the cosine of an angle, or if we want the cosine of an angle, uh, we can do that by uh, taking this triangle, and we can take the adjacent side, which, by the way, the adjacent side is the side that's nearest to the angle. In this case, because theta is down here, this is the adjacent side. If theta was up here, this guy would be the adjacent side. So understanding trig, you have to you have to be able to roll with the punches. Just straight out memorizing is not that great. You really kind of have to get the concept. Uh, so anyways, let's write out what the formula is or what the ratio is. So we'll take the adjacent side and put that over the hypotenuse. We get that from the CAH of SOHCAHTOA. And that helps us to remember how to find the cosine of theta. And then uh, finally, there is the tangent of theta. And the tangent of theta is what we get when we take the opposite side and put it over the adjacent. And that has its useful, uh, it, each of these is useful in its own way, depending on what type of problem you're working with. Now, one other thing that's kind of neat uh, is that, uh, and we'll use this later when we study something called trig identities, is that the tangent of theta also happens to be equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. We'll use that later when we look at trig identities. Um, you could figure it out yourself if you wanted to try it. If you just took opposite over hypotenuse and divided by adjacent over hypotenuse, I think you would see that you get opposite over adjacent. So anyways, we'll use this knowledge later.